Well, look at you. You messed around and found yourself in the Slade Ham Experiment. I'm your host, your tour guide, your Sherpa. Through the dark night of the podcast world. I'm drinking water. I'm off of the coffee as we venture past midnight here in the studio. I feel good. I appreciate you guys hanging out, uh, those of you in the comments. And uh, dear God, the social media uh, places you've found me that I didn't even know I was. I, you ever do that? It's like getting mail at an old address. You can find me. Uh, I am at Slade Ham on all things social. YouTube, the best place to comment. You can also watch this on video uh, form if you'd like it there. I've got a show September 28th at the Houston Improv, so if you're anywhere close to me, I want you to come. It's really simple to do. Just go to improvtx.com. There are tickets available there, or sladeham.com. I've made everything simple and put it all up on my website. Uh, and for those of you who just caught the shows in Fort Worth, big hellos. A lot of new fans out in that area, and some old fans, Taylor, Joe, all you guys who came out, that was, it was really good to see some old friends, and uh, Anna, all of you, um, and I worked with some good friends as well, it's not often as a stand-up that you end up on the show with guys you, you like, I, just, I say like, like isn't a fair word, definitely not guys you know, uh, luck of the draw is a lot of clubs, um, I was with Ralph Barbosa and Aaron Arianper, who are both. It's hard to say you got good friends in, in stand-up comedy because because you 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 don't have good friends in stand-up comedy. You have people you see, maybe maybe ten times in your life, maybe twenty, right? These are, these are some of those guys. We're starting to overlap. When I come back to the DFW area, I generally run into them. Uh, Aaron and I. I'll come back there in a second. Ralph, Ralph is a, you should look up Ralph Barbosa. Hot, young comic who has just got it. Not like, not like hot, like, you, you know what I mean. He's, phew, rocket ship. Shut up. Uh, Aaron, though, is, uh, <laughs> Aaron and I go way back. We're, uh, we went to Central America together. And we're sitting in the green room, we're talking, and it was kind of, I was reminded of stories from where we went. You ever, you ever go do something with somebody and then you just go your separate way and then later on you talk about it again and every, you realize that everybody kind of remembered different details than everybody else? That's all. That's all there was. Aaron remembered some stuff about the zip lining and he remembered the, the hotel we stayed at after the delay. And then I remember, and it's why I think I, I rank Aaron as a very good friend. He extracted me from a situation in El Salvador that sounds much more cryptic than it probably is. <laughs> uh, but it was a, he was a good friend, and for that I am appreciative. Uh, so Aaron, or if anyone who knows Aaron, just pass along the good words. Um, I'm grateful for your friendship. And Ralph, too, uh, thank you. And, and all of the Fort Worth Hyenas Club. I'm just, I'm just a fan of that room. Damn it, Randy Butler is one of the few club owners who has his shit together in this business. Um, the other thing about Aaron, the, the, the Aaron story, that's why uh, talking about revisiting a story, you know, where you both were and you both brought away different details, it makes you think about what people focus on. And the reason I was thinking about that, that's what started the whole thing, was I went to the shows in Fort Worth. I had a, I had, I woke up, let me, let me backtrack. I woke up Thursday morning. My shows were Friday, Saturday. I woke up Thursday morning and I could feel like a, my, my cheek hurt, I, and I looked at it, I couldn't see anything, I couldn't feel anything, but I was like, it hurt, I was like, what is happening here, did I get bitten by something, there's no, I don't see anything on the surface, and then I thought, oh, I remember this as a kid, I used to have really bad acne, like, am I getting a pimple as a grown ass man, is a pimple about to infiltrate my life like this, like in a Tom Clancy novel, the no way. And by, by midday, I had a dark spot. It was, my cheek was swollen. I had a big, like a mound. Like if I turned sideways, I looked like Ron Perlman. And I, it was just like a, like in Beauty and the Beast, like the dog face man. Like, and it just kept getting worse. And I had to go out to the improv Thursday night. 
go say hi to a buddy of mine who was playing. And I walked in, and I was just, the, I was so self conscious because it was too low to wear glasses to cover, and it was we're past the mask. You just look dumb now. So I I just had to walk in with with the what I determined was a spider bite on my face. That's I refused to believe it was a pimple. It's still kind of kicking it, and it never did any pimply shit. It just. It just hurt and kind of got sw- it, like a bite. I've been bitten by spiders in my life. Why now, though? Why, why did they have to give me that night? Like, why isn't that the spider I ate? <laughs> Did anybody, that's one of my favorite myths. Don't look it up. Do any of you know how many spiders we eat on average every year? What do you think? How many how many spiders does the average human eat every year? All right? Yeah, exactly. Zero, you knuckleheads. I forget who convinced me of that when I was a kid. They were like, "Some you eat you know the regular person eats eight spiders a year, right?" There's there has to be I don't know this to be true. There has to be no truth. To that, there's no human beings don't eat spiders in their sleep. I can't, I can't, I can't believe that. That's true. Anyway, um, maybe I'll revisit that. I don't know. I I call my buddy Chase. I go, hey man. I go, have you ever had like a big ass pimple, and you had to go on stage? I was like, did you? What'd you do? Yeah, because I'm not above it, man. I'm. I need to be. I can't be distracted, especially by my own self. I, you put some makeup on it, what do you do? And Chase is so cool. He says, nah, man. He goes, you're going to be like Christian Bale. I was like, what? He goes, they're never going to even see that thing. I was like, what thing? He's like, that thing on Christian Bale's eye. I was like, what? He's like, bro, that's how good of a comic you are. Same way he's an actor of such a caliber that you've never noticed the thing on his eye. And I said, shut up. There's no thing on Christian Bale's eye. I just watched Thor Dark World. And that's not Dark World, the uh, the dumb one, Ragnarok. Not Ragnarok. Ragnarok was good. But the other dumb one, the second dumb one, the, dumb, the second dumbest one that wasn't Dark World, the one that just came out with Takiti Watiti with Love and Rocks or whatever, the, the, the dumb one. I just watched it. And he plays Gore the God Butcher. And I never... I never noticed it, and it's not because he was an underdeveloped, underdeveloped, yeah, underdeveloped character. Because he was. They did a bunch of close-ups. I never noticed it. He has a thing. He has a little nugget, like a little skin, like a piece of skin corn, on the inside of his eye. Like somebody hit him with a spit wad, like a, and it just stuck, and turned all dry and paper mache, and then he just colored it peach. And they do close-ups on him in Thor. All kinds of close-ups. They have to because they didn't build his character up properly to begin with. It's so sad what they did to Gore. So sad. But I didn't see the eye thing. And Chase thinks it's because he's such a good actor you don't notice it. And I said, is that why everybody knows what's wrong with Owen Wilson's nose? (laughs) That's why we all see Megan Fox's toe thumbs. Because all she could do is look hot and change the oil in a Camaro on transport. That's it. Your ability to act is inversely proportional to how noticeable your deformities are. Is that the formula? I don't know if you know this or not. Um, Denzel Washington does not have a head. Little known fact. That's how good of an actor he is. There's no way eight spiders a year. I'm sorry. I'm, I can't, until I close the circuit in my head, I'm not going to be able to move on. And I do have things I want to go and talk about, but I can't. I got to move past this. If you ate eight spiders a year, what's the math on that? Is that 365 divided by eight is like 40 something, 45, 46. You would have to eat a spider every 46 days. I don't have, 
I don't have any data on this. I've never, I don't know that I've watched enough people sleep to know if they are. Because you got to assume if you eat a spider every 46 days, you're not eating everyone that walks on you, right? What are the odds? I mean, you got a lot of surface area. You must have a spider on you every day, and you're just only eating one out of every 45. We should see a lot more spiders on people. And two, don't spiders live off, like, vibration and stuff? That's how they sense the world? I don't know. I don't know what they, what they take in. I don't know what their consciousness experiences. But I imagine... If you got your mouth open big enough to eat a spider in your sleep, you're probably snoring like a, <laughs> making all those dumb noises. Making whoever you live with just want to choke you with a pillow. How would a spider, would does the spider get sucked in? Is it like a, <laughs> do you, like a pit, like a, like a sinkhole? The spider's not going to willingly walk into your mouth. Right? Unless it's a suicidal spider. Which would make a cool band name. Side note. Give it up for the suicidal spiders. How? That's the only way you could actually eat a whole spider. Even if it got close. Like your dumb night breath would, 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 would run it away. Nobody wants your, your, your dumb breath. Especially a spider. So it's got to be suicidal. That's all. Well, I don't know what makes spiders suicidal. It had sex with its wife and it didn't try to kill him. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, man, I, I did everything right. And she didn't even kill me. How do you know, bro? Because I'm here, bro. <laughs> Maybe he went broke because he spent all his money on Jordans. That's like four pair. <laughs> All right, I'm being stupid. You don't eat spiders in your sleep. Help dispel that myth, please. Spiders are getting a bad rap. People think we're eating them. I came here to talk about D whatever the Disney convention that just happened was, and I saw out of all the stuff they, they showed and all the Marvel stuff I love and all the fun things that are bound to come out, there was a little nugget in there about the reboot of the never-ending story coming in, in, in whenever. And I just air-braked my whole life. Ah! You can't do that, Disney. This is a bridge too far. We'll let you have Pocahontas. We'll let you have the, the, the racist things from the Song of the South. We'll let you have all of that. But you, you, you're touching something sacred right now. There's like three movies in the whole world that shouldn't be rebooted. Can we, The Princess Bride, The Usual Suspects, and The NeverEnding Story. Movies that start with V. This movie is... I remember every scene of this film. And I know this is personal to me, and I know I'm biased, and I know it's probably, it probably doesn't hold up, and if you show it to your kids, they think the effects suck, and they don't fall for it, and all the other crap. Whatever. The story is sound. It's remarkable for a lot of reasons. All the scenes I remember. The dad, the divorce. I don't think it's divorce. The kid's mom died and the dad's raising the kid. And it's all awkward. My parents were divorced, so I had awkward moments with my dad. And this dad cracks an egg in a blender. And that's the first time I think I saw a grown-up do something that disgusting as a child. Now I'm like, I could see a raw egg. But then, ugh, ooh, that was terrible. And he drank that egg and the kid... Stole that book from the dude who sort of looked like the guy on the oatmeal container, like a like a bootleg Wilford Brimley. And then he took the book and went the bullies in the attic and the ah. Because I used to steal books and go hide in the library. That's what I used to do when I was just a little bit older than that. So it was like all this empathy for me and this kid and this book. And then it's all the characters. It's all the Atreyu. you. You know what I mean? Like, this is, what's, this is what's remarkable about this movie. Nobody in that movie did anything else. No one. There, one, there's like eight people in the whole movie. Everything's a puppet or a voice. 
Bastion, the little kid. I don't know any of these actors' names, by the way. I could probably, I think I have a page that might have them up. Yeah. They did nothing. Barrett Oliver, a tattoo artist now. He said he quit because 15 people in two weeks made him tattoo the Orin. <laughs> oh, no, that's Noah Hathaway. That was a Treyu. Jesus. These people are weird. That guy's a DJ or some shit. What is, a photographer? Out of the Out of the movies. Out of the movies. The childlike empress out of the movies. Who else? Nobody. All the bullies out of the movies. Yeah, if you don't know the Never Ending Story, you should go watch it. The only people who are anything anymore are Deep Roy, who was the little Oompa Loompa in the, in the Willy Wonka remake, and Alan Oppenheimer, Who's the voice of all the stuff in that? The big rock biter with the strong hands. And the Gamork, that big wolf thing. <sighs> I don't know if he did more. Remember the turtle? We're allergic to humans. And then it sneezed, a chew, and a tray you would have to go land in the mud. The swamps of sadness. That's a, every child should be forced to watch the never ending story. You will learn stuff about sadness that you, you don't see that coming, man. There's a scene, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the film from 1984, I apologize for being too soon. That's going to be on me. Um, Atreyu has a white horse named Artax. And this horse is his best friend for the whole first half of the movie. And they make it an incredibly long way. And then they get to the swamps of sadness to find Morla, the ancient one. And Morla turns out to be a big, dumbass, allergic turtle. But that's, that's beside the point. On the way, Artex gets a little sad. He gives... He gives he, it gets to him, man. It's a, it's a somber place. It's an overcast sky. It's muddy. It's dark. It's, it's dreary. It's just you and Atreyu on a hopeless quest. So yeah, man, your little horse heart starts to get a little sad. You start to sink a little. But you're a kid watching this on the other side of the TV. And the movie's already doing a good job of convincing you that the things in the story are happening in the real world. And you're not really sure what's going on but this horse and you have connected and it gets a little deeper and deeper in the mud and you fresh to stories you don't know enough yet you've never been george rr R. martin you know what i mean your heart still has hope everyone makes it to the end and the horse sinks a little lower and a tray you starts to pull move you stupid horse and he's tugging away and the horse is and i don't know how they shot this scene I'm sure there's a platform with a horse on it, and they slowly lower him in, and right before it gets to his neck, they pull him back out. But my child brain only remembers it as such. The horse, it was struggled. It struggled until the bitter end, and I feel like I watched its head go all the way under the water. I feel like if you told me that they killed six or seven horses shooting that movie, I would tell you you're underestimating. That's what I think. The horse dies for a minute in 40 seconds, the scene is atrociously long. Glue, 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 and the horse sinks into the sadness. You see, it goes dark, and it just comes back, and Atreyu's just sitting there, sad. These kids are upset about stuff people say on Twitter. Ha ha. Ha ha what, what, what have we done? You can't remake it, Disney. Please don't remake it. I would love for you to not remake the never-ending story. I understand why you did it. I understand the reason, right? These, these reboots and these remakes are proven commodities. This generation of kid liked it, therefore. This generation of kid will like it, therefore. We can just remake it with impunity. There's very little risk. 
Only thing new that come out are books. Books are easy because they're cheap. Nobody's got to sacrifice anything for a book. There's no studios on the hook. There's no you know, cameramen and grips and directors and actresses and writers and cat. None of that exists with a book. Only person who's got to suffer for a book to come out is the person who's writing it. And then, after that person's thrown their heart and soul into it, after they've written and crafted an entire universe and put it together and taken the chance on the belief that the world will enjoy it, and they've shoved that out into our universe, and a few people latch on and it becomes a great big hit, a proven commodity, holy shit, the world's into this. Then... The movie studios come crawling in and they take it and they pay some money and the, the author who's never seen that kind of money in their entire life is like, oh my God, I could actually pay my bills and maybe get a house that I don't have to get kicked out of once every year or two. And yeah, oh, absolutely. And then they do. And then next thing you know, the show's on TV created by an entirely different person who lives in Hollywood and it's, you know, the cycle continues. They'll make seven of those shows, and then 20 years from now, they'll reboot that series also. It's how it works. It's Hollywood. I'm sorry. I've been, on the, I've been in the guts of it. We're all, we're all right now. Everybody's like, oh, we just want something new. We want something new. And then everybody's talking about the new Game of Thrones. We don't even call it House of Dragon. We call it the new Game of Thrones. Y'all still watching Game of Thrones? Yeah, what is it, season 12? I don't even know anymore. They're not even trying to reboot that with, with anything new. It's all the same stuff. Blonde princesses and, and old kings who are about to die with family problems and incest. They got all the incest. They just recast the sh and rename the... I don't, it's almost a parody, except it's good because Matt Smith is an incredible actor. He probably has five arms. You just don't notice because he's Matt Smith. They didn't even change the music in this game. They just kept the exact same music, and we just, we just, every, nothing. And we act like they didn't do this to us already. We act like we don't know what's coming. Why are we watching this? What is Game of Thrones? Everybody you liked in Game of Thrones is dead or became a tree or something, but basically dead. And then that last season that they, they put in that last episode, why would we trust them again? Yet here we are. Right back in the pool. We're like abused spouse. He beats me, but he makes a good steak. Do we just like dragons that much? There's got to be a better way to get dragons than this. Is the only, how is this the only dragon show on TV? I'm not saying I don't like the show. Why the incest? Can we just get, may, could, we, could we just, why so much incest? Why, I don't understand the, the obsession with it. Like, you can change that, you know. That's how the books were written. Well, I mean, yes. But, you know, the Little Mermaid and whatnot. So can't we kind of just discuss maybe changing things in a way that fit a less antiquated weird... You know, this is how... There's a weird obsession with incest in America right now. And I, this, is how, this, is how, this is how QAnon ropes you in. Between Game of Thrones and porn, you, you, you start to wonder if there's not some Illuminati plan... I'm so, yeah. <laughs> I got to go to Reddit and see if this is on the QAnon boards. Those guys love to connect stuff. I'm surprised no one's made the incest connection yet. Uh, you got to understand. Look, here, here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. You got, you got, let's start with the facts. Let's start with the facts, right? We all know Biden got that pangolin to fuck that bat, and that's how COVID got started. So if you start there with just the stuff we know, the COVID being the plan, and Biden put that together with Bezos. They did it, and then they, they took the pangolin stuff, and they rubbed it on the Amazon boxes, and that's how every, so that's how it got to America. And they play, they play cards back room at a calzone shop in New York. Now, that's where Pizzagate got it wrong. We can talk about that later. Now, here's the point. If they're just, they, get, they put COVID out to keep us 
inside, you see. He's starting to feel which hand I'm putting my pocket into to keep us inside. Now, if we're going to be inside, that's how, you, that's how you get rid of people. People, in order to keep a species together, you need a, you need, well, you need a breeding population. If you don't have a breeding population, if everybody's stuck inside, if they can't co-mingle amongst each other, now you feel the hat I'm putting on my head. Listen to me. Once you got no breeding population, we're just stuck inside. They think we're just going to sit in here and die? You think we're just going to sit here and die just because we can't get out there and make more people? No. Now, I understand they want to make the people go away so that all the gay penguins can live. I understand the facts. Look, these are facts, people. You can look it up. Calzone shop. But I'm here to tell you that I will do what I got to do. I got rights, damn it. I got rights, and I, this is the understanding I'm willing to come to. I will sleep with every damn member of my family if it means keeping the human species alive. Do you understand me? I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. No part of me wants to do it. But fuck you, Brandon. I'll bang every sister I have. Do you understand me? Listen. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. It's a weird world we live in. Everything's a reboot. <sighs> Elvis is the only original movie in the top 10 of 2020. How's that little nugget sit with you? Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Spider-Man No Way Home, Thor Love and Thunder, Minions The Rise of Gru, The Batman, Jurassic World Dominion, Doctor Strange The Multiverse of Madness, and Top Gun Maverick round out the top 10. Not one of them an original film. All of them continuations of a different property a different franchise don't worry elvis will probably not stay in the top 10 we still got halloween ends black panther wakanda forever that new avatar movie to round out the year so goodbye elvis and your happy your happy originality you're still written after a dude who actually did no one write anything god okay i promised i wouldn't yell without solution so i will just write original stuff that's what I'll do. And then I won't feel guilty about yelling about this. Um, I We have been all over the road. That's what makes this the experiment. I don't know if it's as fun for you as it is for me, but uh, I'm always open to new stories and subjects and things I haven't uh, read or send me. Uh, I don't like weird. I like weird stuff, cool sciencey stuff and things nobody knows about. Uh, send them to me. Let me read them. Who knows what direction this show will go? I've got some guests coming up, uh, some people I really want to talk to. Whether there'll be actual episodes or interspersed so you get two in a week, I do not know yet. But there are plenty of chances to catch me live. Uh, Sladeham.com. You can see me at the Houston Improv with my good buddy Jerry Wayne Longmire. September 28th, those tickets available at Sladeham.com or ImprovTX.com. And then I'll be up at Absolute Comedy in Ottawa and Toronto. Toronto first, followed by Ottawa the last two weeks of October. You can go to AbsoluteComedy.ca for tickets there. I thank you, as always, for hanging out with me. I'll see you out there somewhere.